Hey everybody, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and we are covering Chivalry today in episode 6 of Saturday Heat Signature, which is our series that covers up-and-coming games that don't quite have the hype that they deserve. And so we are talking about Chivalry Medieval Warfare today, which is the follow-up game to the Source Engine mod Age of Chivalry, which we actually covered it back in the very, very early days of Gamers Nexus. So Chivalry Medieval Warfare is actually a really cool take on the old mod. Basically it's a, a first person medieval combat game It's with an, an abundance of weapons and you just kill your enemies, take the objectives, and there's a lot more to it than that but we'll get to that in a second because first I want to talk about the idea and the backing for the game. In essence it is multiple kingdoms fighting back in the medieval days so it is more of a realistic medieval game and not so much of a fantasy game but that is no reason to look the other way because it is a very good looking medieval game and if it is anything like Age of Chivalry I have no doubt in my mind that this game will have some pretty cool features so let's look at those features they have said that they are aiming for an a cinematic fast paced Hollywood style action they are going for an objective based play for multiplayer there are different multiplayer modes but the the uh, flagship mode is a team objective mode, which basically means instead of take over site A or take take over site B or defend site A or defend site B, which works perfectly in a game like Counter Strike. In this game, in a medieval world, it's not quite as simple as hey, go take that village over there. No, your knights are not going to stand for that. They are going to kill everything in that village, and then they are going to steal all their food. That's just that's how it works. So your secondary objectives, your sub objectives are attempting to mask that takeover style play which which plagues games like this so much and just makes them really repetitive so it is a mask of course the primary goal is still to just take something over but it's not quite as simple as that you might have to kill or free peasants or uh, kill kings what invade towns break into castles ram down the gates stuff like that you have to charge through courtyards and there's a preset campaign but it is very fast paced and it helps to make it feel like hey I'm actually supposed to do something not just go take over that thing that's marked with an A it's a lot a lot more detailed than that and that really helps to make sure the game has better longevity better overall duration of gameplay let's move on though to the way the multiplayer maps are actually separated out they are set into what's called a campaign well or what we call a campaign anyway which basically means a ton of prepackaged maps that you have to go through in order to win or or lose the level so you might let's say we have an attacking and a defending team the defending team is defending a city the attacking team is attacking the city pretty simple uh, but it is a bit more complex than that because the defending team will first say they start outside the walls they're trying to stop the attackers from coming in and eventually after a couple minutes the attackers are able to get a battering ram up to the gates and ram down the gate so then what might happen depending on the map of course you jump to the next separated part of that campaign, the next level, and now the defenders are defending a courtyard or a marketplace, and the attackers, of course, have to take it over. And that's where killing peasants and all of that stuff comes in that we earlier talked about. There are multiple phases for each team, and it does a lot more than, I'm going to defend this bomb site for 10 minutes, get bored, and quit. No, you actually do have a progressive objective to work toward. Now we can talk about some of the mechanics because those are just as deserving as the gameplay that we've been talking about. First of all, combat. It is, to quote the developer, freeform, fully directional, skill-based attacks and blocking, which effectively means that it is freeform, meaning you can swing your sword, and if you decide to alter your path of that sword, let's say your enemy jumps or ducks, you dynamically counter and change your direction of that attack because you're you're so quick with your reflexes and so you swing up to hit him when he's jumping well because the hit tracing for the weapon is actually drawn in real time so it's not like you swing and then you have a predefined path that you're gonna hit no it's much better than that if you swing and they move and then you move you might actually hit him even though you already clicked before he moved and that is just because as you saw in the video I just showed the tracing behind the weapon is drawn in real time and each weapon has unique tracing for the most part so that really makes for very fluid combat and it makes for uh, including these other combat dynamics that have been added to the game like dodging, ducking, blocking, and parrying there are four primary classes in chivalry medieval warfare there will be a, a man-at-arms class which is a light melee warrior so they are great flankers for that reason because they're quick they have speed abilities 
that can help them destroy harassment units like archers and they, they're just really good for getting in and out of situations. There are also archers, of course excellent harassers from afar. Also vanguards, the third class, they are considered the balanced class. They have great reach weapons. Finally we have knights who are your tank class, your really slow moving, high damage dealing. They soak up all of those extra hits. But to close up here I want to go back to the real time tracing of attacks because as a player alternates his attack pattern we can have some pretty cool results, so let me give you an example here. Let's say you and I are fighting and we swing at the same time and we're the same class with the same weapon. Now, I swing a little bit higher and you swing a little bit lower. If I hit you, it's more deadly. If you hit me, I might still be alive. For this reason, you now decide to pull your weapon with your mouse, of course, up as high as you can to try and collide with my weapon as it's coming towards your face. And you succeed in this, you manage to pull your weapon up and it does collide so that my weapon is now not going to hit you in the face and it is going to hit your sword and then we'll keep fighting because you're still alive so that's really freaking cool if I'm honest it is one of the coolest things that I have seen for heat signature games in terms of mechanics so far so I am pretty pumped about this game it is coming out later this year 2012 I believe it is now so keep an eye out on that please like this video if you liked it comment below if you have any questions at all and subscribe, 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 and uh, I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.